thing that, that we often are blessed to say and, and celebrate is that regardless if you go to church at Salem or at First Baptist or at First Presbyterian or at Mount Bethel or wherever that is, y'all, we all don't have a different Jesus each. We worship the same Jesus. Therefore, just because we, we, we live in different homes doesn't mean we're not family. Amen. Okay? And so that's what's happening today is the families getting together. If you didn't know this, um, the church historic calls this the season of darkness. Where we remember the moment when Christ has been crucified, but he's not yet risen. When we live in the darkness. And for many of us here, I'm sure some of y'all are dealing with your own darkness. I'm sure your loved ones are dealing with their own darkness. But in the mix of dealing with our darkness, you're literally sitting in the light. Right now, this very minute, you're sitting in the light, right? And even if we don't feel like we can see the light right now in our own lives, we recognize the fact that Easter's a coming. That even if we can't see Jesus in our lives right now, that He's got our back. And He's not going to give up on us. Think about this, in the last several million years, thousands of years, out of the millions and billions of people that have lived, He's never given up on one of them yet. He's not about to start with you. So that's the Jesus we're here to worship today. The one we can lean hard against, even when it's so dark we can't see where we're going. Um, just a, a quick couple of announcements. First of all, I want to thank each and every one of the clergy who are here, everybody who's here from different congregations, from the community. Um, together, we celebrate God's love more fully, and that's what this is about. Also, over on the table, there is a ton of food. We thank Community Cares for, for providing that. Please take as much with you as possible. The more you take, the less I have to clean up. So thank you for that. Uh, the only note that I want to share is the potato chips on the bottom. Technically expired two weeks ago. I just have to tell you that for legal reasons. Uh, but everything else is good. Take it all. Okay, just don't take the table. I'm not allowed to say that. Um, and, and right now I, I'd like to ask if, uh, if bro Brother Jimmy Salters of our... Uh, of our sheriff's department would come and would you open us up in a word of prayer? Let's bow his Almighty God, in the name of your Son Jesus Christ, we come today to say thank you. We come to praise you. We come to glorify you. The sacrifice that your Son made that we might be Christians and brothers and sisters all over this world and all over this land, everywhere, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the blood that flowed from the cross of Calvary that united us so that nothing can divide us. No political agenda can divide us. We are one in you. And we thank you, God, for this day for this pastors and the pastors in this church that's providing this service today that we remember the sacrifice that Christ made for us. That upon remembering we might have love in our hearts. No evil nowhere. That we might be healed upon calling on your name. Our needs might be met in you, Lord. Not in our political party. Not in our gender. But in you. And we look to you in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you today that every soul will be touched by this sacrifice. And then we come together to celebrate the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then it binds us together that we can never be separated, no matter what goes or what comes. God, we thank you and bless us as we go forward in this service. Yes, and we remember the sacrifice. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, if you would, you have uh, uh, songs here. So if you would, please join me. At last it did my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die. At the cost, at 
the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light And the burdens of my heart rolled away It was there by faith I received my sight And now I'm happy all the day Was it crimes and death that I had done He groaned upon the tree Amazing pity, grace on none And love beyond the the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Dear Lord, I give myself away in all that I can at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I'm happy all the day. At the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I'm happy all the day. Amen. I would say be seated, but you're already seated. <laughs> I want to read a passage of scripture that draws our attention to the work of Christ on the cross. And what is amazing about this passage of scripture is it is was written over 700 years before the events of the cross happened. And that should give you and me great confidence in the gospel. Great confidence in our hope of what Christ has done for us. So I want to ask you if you would stand with me as I read God's word. And as we read it, I want you to think about Jesus on this Good Friday and what he endured on the cross, not because of his sin, but because of our sins. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them, they see. And that which they have not heard, they understand. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant. And like a root out of the dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. As one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned off everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. And yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. 
and they made his grave with the wicked. And with a rich man in his death, although he had no vi done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring, and he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. And he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. Give thanks to God for what he has done for us. I'm going to ask you to stand back up if you don't mind. I didn't get up here fast enough, I guess. This is a time... It's hard for me to get through those scriptures, I tell you, brother. Um, we're just going to pray this morning and come to the Lord for our hope and our peace, but also to tell Him that we've come again to repent and to lay our lives down for Him. Amen? Jesus, here we are today. Without you, we don't have a hope. We have nothing. If through your death, your willing death, you've given us everything. We have life and peace and hope for the future. We have eternal life. You've given us families, oh God. You've given us homes. You've given us wealth and riches, Lord, that we shouldn't have. You've given us all of this, living in a land, O oh God, of freedom. Lord, I, I thank you that without Jesus, none of this would be possible. So God, we come to you today to say, Lord, we recognize in ourselves there is no good thing. And we still don't understand what you see in us, what you saw in us to cause you to do what you did. That you would willingly give up your life. And the Father, you would willingly give up your precious Son for us to die in my place, to die in our place. So, Father, we, we lay down all our preconceived notions and, and all our uh, cliches and all of those religious things, and we just come to you and say, Lord, you are our Father. And because of your blood, we have hope. And we repent of our sins. And all of us carry these issues and problems and fears and burdens. And, and Lord, you've already paid for them all. So we lay them at your feet now. We say, Lord, we refuse to pick them back up. You paid too high a price for us. For us to carry these things around anymore. We come to you in simple faith. I say thank you for all you've done. We're forever devoted to you, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now you can be seated. <laughs> if you would like to say it, you may stand. kind of reminds me of Amish church, except for they, they stand, they sit, and, but then they kneel for a good while, so it's kind of uh, interesting. <laughs> Lord of left name of high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us You came from hell 
To me, he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law, out of the law that Christ abides forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? The Word of God. For the people of God, drawn from John chapter 12, verses 25 through 34. And as I begin, as I begin to look out, I see so many faces. Uh, my heart just rejoices. I want to focus on verse 32 of this 12th chapter of St. John for our subject today. Again it reads, And I... If I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Our subject for today, and the thought I pray that you carry with you, not in your not in your mind only, but also in your heart, is entitled "Lift Him Up." Lift Him Up. Now let us pray that the Lord blesses the word accordingly. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, Lord, we feel thankful unto you for blessing us to be able to come and even on the outside enjoy your wonderful nature that you provided us. And Lord, with this we tell you thank you. But on today, O oh Lord, as we celebrate Good Friday, we come that you will give us a word that even now we can appreciate the significance of Good Friday more than ever before. We pray to God that you would minister a word to every one of us, that we would hear the voice of the Lord, that you would touch our hearts, that we would receive the seed that you plan to plant on this day. And God, as you minister the word, let it produce, let it increase abundantly in our lives, in our hearts, and that we will also be an influence on others that they may see Christ in us. Preach, teach, instruct us according to your will. Now, Father, as we make this request, I must now beg and ask of your God to look beyond me as a person. For, Lord, at this moment, at this time, I yield my will that thine will shall be done. I ask you to God that as I open my mouth, that Lionel will not speak. But you allow your Holy Spirit to intervene and share a word for your children. Lord, I ask right now that you look beyond my fault and find the meditation of my heart, pleasing and acceptable in thy sight, that you use me according to your will. Now, in Jesus' name, take over, take charge. I surrender all unto you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Let us say amen. 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 It is so beautiful. Looking at all of your faces out there, and, and it's marvelous that God has allowed uh, everyone to come and to show up. I'm so glad to see everyone that's here today. It's like a whole bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> to God be the glory. To God be the glory. It is indeed an honor and privilege to have 
this opportunity to again come and share the Lord's word with God's people in this community. Good Friday, 2021. As things have changed over the years, especially since COVID-19, Friday now is the only weekday that we have community fellowship as we share Holy Week. We used to have it on Monday, but things have changed. So I sincerely welcome each and every one of you to the Havana Ministers Community Good Friday Welcome Services. I trust and pray that God would get the glory in all that we say and do. Easter 2021. Most Christians generally are planning and preparing to celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus. When we study the Word of God, we realize that the world had been planning for the first Easter, the death of Jesus on Good Friday, and his resurrection on Sunday morning for generations, generations, generations. Even when you study the book of Genesis, you realize that God purposed and deliberately put a plan in place that has already been preordained by him that allows the, the relationship between man and God at some point in time to be reestablished. So from the very beginning, the world was planning for a Good Friday. And see, when you look at Good Friday, even though it's, it's an ironic statement, the essence of Good Friday is that they took my Lord and Savior. After they whipped him all night long, they laid him down on that rugged cross, kneeled his hands there at his feet. Even though Pilate said, I find no fault in him, only to for us to realize that he did it all for me. If it was not for me, if it was not for me, I could find no good in Good Friday. Mm. There are prophecies throughout the Word of God that allow us to know that Jesus was coming. They describe and provide intimate details of His coming and, and more importantly, that His suffering, of His suffering and dying. And through it, it will bring healing and forgiveness for man. From the very beginning, God wanted man to have a relationship with him. And I'm reminded, when I think about Good Friday, more than 2,000 years ago, I'm reminded of the 1951 movie that was entitled, The Day the Earth Stood Still. And in that movie, we saw Michael Rennie, and he was so concerned about the world being able to continue to exist. We had to find ourselves subject to something. As I look at the, from the perspective of the scripture, it reads as if Good Friday was a day that the earth stood still. The darkness from the sixth to the ninth hour. He just hung on the cross. And finally, he gave up the ghosts. And even the centurion said, this truly was the Son of God. The day the earth stood still, if you look at it from that perspective, that means now that everything I had hope in, and, and if you need a witness, why don't you call one of the disciples, and, and they will tell you on Good Friday, I lost all hope. Uh -huh. On Good Friday, I, I, there was no way else to turn. I, on Good Friday, I realized that this Jesus, who is King of King and Lord of Lord, they hung him on the cross. Yeah. But when you look at it from the perspective, and he did it all for me. He did it all for you. In the midst of all of that harsh uh, torture and pain, 
There's something good in it. Because now I have an opportunity to live with Christ. It was during the first Easter, Good Friday in particular, that the world had finished the Holy Week activities. In fact, our reverence scripture refers us to the Saturday before Jesus made his entrance into Jerusalem. The day we know that we know as Palm Sunday. He made his triumphant, triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. It was a Saturday that Jesus finally arrived and made it to the tomb of the sleeping dead Lazarus. That's the reference scripture we're, we're looking at. Jesus' famous words were echoed in his dialogue with Mary just prior to going to Lazarus' tomb. She, she, he said to Mary, he said to Martha, you will see Lazarus again. You know how smart we get when we start leaning on our own understanding. So the response was, oh yes, uh, at, at the resurrection. I'll see him again then, but that doesn't do me no good right now, Jesus. Now I'll just add that little part in there. Then Jesus responded and said to say, I am the resurrection. I, I, I am it. But even when he said it, they, 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 they didn't believe him. They had doubts. Take me to the grave. But, but he'd been in the grave for four days. He's going to stink. Jesus, what you doing that? I just want you to know that Jesus made it perfectly clear that I am the resurrection. At Lazarus' grave, Jesus spoke the words of this, his last of three miracles that were performed after the Sanhedrin finalized their decision that they're going to kill Jesus. Ah, he, he healed the impotent man and, and, and they had a problem with that and and they didn't stop there. Then he, then he healed the, the blind man. And, and they didn't like that. And now here we are dealing with Lazarus. And he's about to perform his third miracle. Where he spoke to Lazarus. And, resur and he was resurrected. He came back to life. The problem with these three miracles. Is that they took place on the Jewish Sabbath. They have no problem with the healing. They overlook and minimize, minimize the miracle and say, you shouldn't do it on the Sabbath. A problem. I tell you, some people can find problems in anything. So at the tomb, at the, at the tomb, the scripture says that Jesus cried with a loud voice. And that loud voice signifies his authority and the power he had to do whatever he asked of his father. And he spoke with authority and, the, and power and said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. The third miracle. And after this third miracle, even more people began, began to believe in Jesus and began to follow Jesus. Even the Jews began to believe. Mm, this, this is on Saturday. And you know the story? The very next day was Palm Sunday. And when we began to realize that that's the Sunday, that's the Sunday, that's the time when, when the people kept on coming to Jesus and, and Jesus was coming into the city and they're saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Mm, Jesus. As we began to look at our text on this morning and say, he that loveth his life shall lose it. We want to look at the essence of what we as believers were charged to do by Jesus while he was in Bethany after the resurrection of Lazarus. And you can see that in chapter 12, verse 1. But Jesus... 
was sitting down and Martha was preparing the meal and Jesus was getting ready to eat, to eat and, and Lazarus was right there listening to Jesus minister. But Mary got down at Jesus' feet and again she anointed him with that precious oil, a second anointing of Jesus Christ. Then on the next day, on the next day, the Sunday, Palm Sunday that is, the start of the first Holy Week, Jesus came to Jerusalem on a donkey that had never been ridden on before. And there was a multitude of people welcoming Jesus with, with the palm leaves and, and saying, Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Mm. It was Palm Sunday. And I believe that you, you follow the scripture and, and on that Palm Sunday, one of the Roman soldiers was saying to Jesus, it don't take all of that. You don't have to make all that noise. And, and why y'all doing all these things? You know, does it take all of that? What do you want to say or do to exemplify just how good Jesus is to you? And Jesus responded and said, listen, even if they close their mouth, and even if they shut up, because of my father and because of what I'm here for. He said, the very rocks will cry out. Hosanna, Hosanna. The very rocks will cry out. So as the Lord began to share with us on today, the people was welcoming Jesus as he came in. And it was Palm Sunday. The scripture says right around verse 23 of chapter 12 of St. John that, that there were certain Greeks who went about seeking Jesus. They, they, they wanted to find Jesus. Now, I cannot overemphasize it. There are people today who's looking for Jesus at all the wrong places. Maybe the Lord is telling us it's time now for, for every one of us to take a, advantage of the opportunity to lift him up. Amen. To tell somebody about Jesus. Huh. They were looking for him. And, and when Jesus... And, and, and they went through a change that these people are looking for Jesus, I think, and you started off. And, and then somebody else got the word to the next disciple. And then finally Jesus got the word that there's a Greek folks out here looking for you. And Jesus said, and I look at the scripture as it says, the hour is come. When I found out that, that these Greeks were looking for me, Jesus stood up and said, my hour is come. It's time now. It's time now. The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. And after Jesus made this statement, he uses a very simple illustration or parable. Right there in verse 24 where he said, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. Unless it do that, when it does that, mm, it will bring forth much fruit. It was Jesus' way of saying it's that time. It's his parable that said, it's a parable, his, his thought that in essence says, um, oh, it's, be, it's time for my death. I must die. So that we, you and I, may live. And it's in this passage of scripture where Jesus gives us. And, and I, I tell you, if you don't recognize it simply by reading the scripture, I encourage you to go back and read it again. But he says here, if I and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. That's our charge. He give us our charge. And he, lets us, he helps us understand. He said, your charge will not even begin until after I die. 
Now this is St. John 12. And yet he's saying these things. This occurs uh, on, on Palm Sunday. Six days before his death. And he says, if I be lifted up. and You know it went right over the disciples' head. Went right over their head. But he's saying to us today. You need to lift them up. You need to lift them up. The disciples, even though they mentioned many, many times, they still didn't realize that Jesus was getting ready to die. It was his time for him to die. And as, he, as we look at the passage of Scripture, he gives us some directions. If you recall, as I said a moment ago, the Greeks was coming, had came, and, and they was looking for Jesus. I wonder do anybody know anybody that you could believe are seeking the Lord? I wonder. Now he tells us in verse 25 that, that if we are to be his disciples, if we are going to follow after them, number one, he said, you got to be willing to lose your life. How many of us have sung the song, I surrender all, all to thee. Beautiful words. How many of us allow those words to be real in our lives? I, 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 I would say all the time, but I know we have to repent. But how about at least sometime? It's amazing we, we, we don't mind saying I surrender all when we're in the sanctuary. It's amazing that it's okay as long as I'm around all the other brothers and sisters in the ministry. I can say I, I surrender all. But when we are faced with an opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus, to lift up the name of Jesus, what do we do? They ain't asking me nothing, so I'm going to keep on going. Uh -huh. what, what are we doing? He said, if, if, if you're going to be my disciple, number one, you must be willing to lose your life for Jesus. Number two, number two, number two, and I'm just looking at the scripture. You see this in, right around verse 25. He said, uh, uh, if you're going to be my disciple, follow me. Follow me. If you want to serve me, follow me. Mm, I challenge sometimes when you have marriage counseling sessions and and you tell you, you tell the, 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 the husband to be that the Bible says uh, love your wife as Christ loved the church. And they have that look on the faith, believers and non believers, but Jesus died for the church. He said now you got the word. And number three, number three, I'm time back up. Uh, uh, number three, he said, the other thing is, when you are my disciple, when you are my servant, when you are willing to serve me, guess what? My father will honor you. That's the charge. And after Jesus said, said these words, he, he continued a little bit more, and, and he prayed unto his father. Because the scripture says in 28, Father, glorify thy name. And after Jesus said those words, the scripture says, Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. And the people therefore that stood by, I heard some noise. It sounded like thunder. I heard some noise. Uh, he was just praying out of order. I heard some noise. But you got to get to the point where you realize and you can say, I heard the voice of Jesus. Amen. Say, come on to me and, and I will give you rest. Uh, and the scripture said, that's what they began to say. Hmm. The Bible says that the Lord Jesus Christ, he began to pray unto his father. And right around verse 27, he made it perfectly clear. Here's why I'm praying. My soul is troubled. My soul is troubled. And the Lord began to minister. He began to share. And the Lord wants to know that when his soul 
was trouble. He asked himself the question, uh, and it's interesting. Um, that's that's the whole reason I'm here. Why why am I troubled? That's the reason I came. I came for you, and you, and you, and you. But yet I'm troubled. Yet I'm troubled. And we know, going forward to Good Friday, there's some final things that Jesus did that week. Uh, he began to cleanse the temple. As a matter of fact, the talk about him cleansing it twice because they were devouring the, devouring the temple. I, I got to finish. And I think about the word of God, about I know ye not that your body is the temple of Christ. And Jesus said, you do not defile God's temple. And before Jesus died on Calvary Cross, the temple was a physical building. But when he died, have mercy. When they lifted up on the cross all of a sudden, and he gave it to the ghost, guess what? Now the temple becomes your body, whereby the Holy Spirit can abide in your heart. And when he abides in your heart, praise God, he cleansed the temple, he instituted the Lord's Supper, he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane because, because I don't want to do this, Lord, but, but, but not my will, but time will be done. He was betrayed by Judas. His disciples scattered. They did a mock trial. Pilate in half, from, from Pilate to Herod and back to Pilate and then to the people where the people said, crucify Jesus. Them same people that a few days earlier said, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. You better not depend on people. You better not depend on people. Oh, that, that's my type. Boy, I, I know I got to make my time. I got to finish up. <laughs> in the name, by the name of Jesus. Mmm. Crucified Jesus. And this is what Christians refer to as Holy Week. It talks about all the people that were following Jesus. On Good Friday today. On Good Friday for that first one. They physically nailed Jesus to the cross and they lifted him up on the cross and he died. And Jesus said in, uh, in the text, he said, if I be lifted up, and he said the whole point of this is that, that it signifies that, that, that through my death you can have life. But that wasn't the end of the story. Well, Sunday, y'all can get the rest about the Sunday morning. But I will tell you, the scripture says, all power was given unto me. Jesus Christ. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Lift it up. He now charges us to lift him up. I'll make it simple. When was the last time? When was the last time we took a special moment just to lift him up? Amen. And, and we act like we got to go through all these theatrics to lift him up. It's, it, but it's not all of that. Amen. When was the last time you took a moment to tell your children, your young children, or your grandchildren, a simple story that's found in God's Word. You, you, you know, I'm probably four or five years old. You know when I got, when I got excited about Jesus, about the Bible and the Word of God? When, when me and my siblings sat on Mama's bed in her bedroom, and she had the Bible out, and, and there was a picture in the Bible where, where Samson had the door on, on his back, and he tore the door down. And, and Mama told me the story about Samson being the, the strongest man in the world. At four years old, guess what? I want to be the strongest man in the world. And guess where I found the story at? The story was found in the Bible. And to this day, almost 70 years later, I remember that 50 minutes that, that they spent with me to tell me about the Bible. No, they didn't quite get the whole story at five, six years old, but Mira had a little lamb, but, but nevertheless, <laughs> the lamb of God was real. That's right. 
All I'm saying, and I'm closing right now, is we are charged with lifting up Jesus. Tell somebody about Jesus. It doesn't have to be somebody you know. It can be your little child can be a straight on straight. But tell somebody about Jesus. And because we're not reading the word of God, so we understand the stories to tell. I mean, can you think of a greater story than in the Bible than where we got a whole a million people? You got mountains on both sides and, and a river in front, uh, ocean in front of them and, and Pharaoh's army is coming and they're going to kill us. And, and can you imagine the excitement of the child on the game and say, you mean to tell me God put some fire to separate the soldiers from the people? And then God made the water go away and dry the land and the water by on dry land. Well, how can that be? When you start telling children, children believe what their parents say. <laughs> Lift them up, saints. To God be the glory. Let us say amen. 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 I am going to ask you to stand for this particular song. Great word, Pastor Lionel. I think that's something that even today in a text to an individual, I was echoing the same thing, that we should be lifting up Jesus. We should tell people about Jesus, about his saving grace. So please join me in this song. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best were a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Until my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Oh, that old rugged cross So despised by the world Holds a wondrous attraction for me for the dear Lamb of God left his home up above and he all to his cavalry. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown in the old rugged cross stained with blood so divine what a wondrous of beauty i see for it is on that old cross that jesus suffered and died and pardoned me sanctified me so i'll cherish the old rugged cross until my trophies at the last i lay down i will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown to the old rugged cross i'll ever be true its shame and reproach gladly bear and you'll leave someday to my home far away where his glory forever i'll share so i'll cherish the old rugged cross until my trophies at last i lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. I'll cherish the old rugged cross. And I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies 
Until my trophies at last I lay down I will cling I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Amen, you may be seated You may be aware that we're wrapping up a holy season in the church known as Lent. This is the season where the church historic has called us to discomfort, to suffer, not just for the sake of suffering, but to become closer to Christ, to, to do something to let someone else know we love them, and his name is Jesus, like getting flowers for a loved one. So today we've received a very uncomfortable challenge towards discipleship. So the question becomes, what does that look like for you to organically live that out in your personality and in your life? Maybe for you, it's the next time you're at a restaurant, you say to the waitress, hey, I'm about to pray. Is there anything I can pray for you about? Maybe it's the next time somebody says, thank you for holding the door. You go, yeah, God bless you. Don't just say bless you. Let's see if they say it back. Okay? Maybe for you, it's, it's somebody crying or broken and you go, would it be okay if I pray for you? Even if you just keep me in your personal prayers, or if you feel comfortable, push yourself, do it on the spot. Be surprised at what God does. Find something that's organic to your soul, to become a little more uncomfortable, so someone else may find a lot more love in Christ. I challenge you to receive that as your mission and your blessing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen.